Well, all right. Welcome to Digging Deeper, another episode. I'm Brandon, lead pastor of Rise City Church, and I'm here with our Connections pastor. Robert Pedroza. Robert Pedroza, who gave, I would say, if not the, one of the best messages thus far in 2022 at Rise City Church. Dude, it was seriously so exceptional. You got to go listen to it. It's even better than what this Digging Deeper is going to be. I don't even know what this Digging Deeper is going to be, but I'm intimidated by this Digging Deeper. Dude, it was so good. Seriously, it was so good. There were so many things, and uh, I'm excited to jump in. And uh, if I remember last time, you had a lot of questions for me personally, (laughs) so I'm going to start going on the personal route. But make sure to watch it. We were in Acts chapter 12. And I remember yesterday or the day before, I, I just asking how you're feeling about the message. Yeah. And uh, I think even backstage, you used these words to me. You said, well, um, I feel kind of naked. Yeah. And I go, why? Intimidated, why, why did you feel naked yesterday? What does that mean? I mean, could you preach with clothes on, <laughs> right? So it wasn't, it wasn't literal. So tell us about why yesterday that message made you feel naked. So as I started preparing this message, I ended up writing like three or four messages. I don't know if that's ever happened to you where you start oh, kind yeah. of preparing something you're like, you realize this is not one message. This is like three or four. And so I started praying and asking God, which one do I preach? Which one do I, do I go with? And he told me, go with the one that you've worshiped through. I, I love, you said to me, and I was like, that is such a great line. What do you mean by that? Uh, I meant by go with the one that has most defined what God has been doing in my life lately. Hmm. And, and I realized that the one that I was, the one that I had worshiped through the most was not the most flattering one. It wasn't the one that was the most like rah, rah and exciting. And the one that I usually feel more comfortable with. The other ones were about perseverance and one was called hard knocks. And it was talking about when life starts knocking hard on you, you got to knock hard back. And, and the church was knocking hard with this Ectenos prayer and they were stretching out everything they had. And then Peter, he kept on knocking. And so you've got to be persevering and you've got to have grit. That sounds a lot more exciting and comfortable for me. But the one that I went with was really about, uh, it, it was called, it was a setup and it was about how oftentimes our burdens are a setup for the breakthrough. And, yeah. and part of that was, really kind of getting naked in front of everybody else. Yeah, you're super honest about your past and things you've been through. And things I'm going through. I'm going through now. Because, you know, I shared a lot of those burdens. If you haven't watched the message, you can go back and watch it. Um, I don't want to relive those. (laughs) But, you know, I kind of bore my soul and my past and my emotions and my experiences and that's it's a really scary thing for me, just to be honest with you, to be that vulnerable. Um, Because... When you face some of the things that I have faced in my life, sometimes vulnerability feels unsafe. Yeah, It feels scary in yeah. that because you feel naked. You feel exposed. You feel like everyone knows that I um, am carrying this baggage. And the truth is, is that I wish it would be a lot easier if I could say, I'm not carrying any of those burdens anymore. Right. But a lot of those things I'm, I still deal with. I'm still carrying. I'm still seeing effects that come up in my life on a regular basis, and I'm still letting God minister to those places. I'm still worshiping through those things mm. still. I'm still having God speak into and minister and uplift in those places that I feel smashed down. Yeah, and I think what I love about that, I'm, I, I worship through this, this message the most, is it's just there's a transparent part of that for the preacher of saying, mm-hmm. this isn't just a job. Yeah. This isn't just me looking at a text and saying, what's the best thing I can preach about? But but to worship through something first means that it did a work in you, yeah. which then you let essentially spill out on the rest of us. And I think we all felt that. Mm-hmm. And um, so we like you being naked around here. That's, that's <laughs> good. So a um, couple things. I mean, I, this this podcast actually may be a little bit longer than normal. <laughs> I, had, I had a lot of questions because there's so many great points. I mean, you, were, you had so many great points. And one of the things you talked about was Peter sleeping in jail, not because he had security, because he believed God was definitely going to rescue him, but probably because he was overwhelmed by his burdens. Yeah. In Peter's situation, he was sleeping, and the burdens that were brought about in his life came upon him because, right, of, of things that, that he had done. They, they came at him because he was preaching Jesus yeah. and all that other kind of stuff. And then you gave all this advice. There are a lot of people that feel like that they have not deserved burdens that have come to them. Other people have done things to them Mm -hmm. and their actions, right, didn't necessarily elicit that response. 
Do you think people out there listening who are overwhelmed by burdens based upon what people have done to them when their actions maybe didn't deserve it, would you give the same advice that you gave yesterday as, as far as needing to get up and have the chains released and moving into uh, kind of like the, the difficult areas? Or is it different when people have had things happen to them rather than them bringing about things that cause their circumstances? I guess, I mean, yes, I would from a biblical standpoint, right, of, of kind of the grit of being willing to, and part of perseverance is part of that as well. And I know that a lot of times, like Peter, Peter faced some injustices. Yeah. James, who got his head chopped off, also faced injustices. The church was facing injustices at this time. And I know that a lot of times we face burdens that are placed on us because of injustice or even just because of life. Yeah. Life is hard and things like that. But one thing that, I, that I'm realizing more and more, and God is just reminding me about, and it seems so elementary, it seems so simple, but I keep forgetting it, is that the meaning of life, that big question, right? The meaning of life, the purpose of life, I don't think it's so that we can be happy or fulfilled mm. or get to do all the things that we think we're supposed to do or be in the positions that we're supposed to be in or be with the people we're supposed to be with. It's to know God and to help other people know him too. And if that's your sole aim as a follower of Jesus Christ, and if that's what you were created for by the God who created everything, then because of that, no matter what kind of burdens you face, we're called to keep going, yeah. keep stepping, keep moving. Paul calls it running the race, yeah. right? Taking steps in this race that we're running as we're striving for it. And sometimes it is like this straining or striving or this working or pushing up against obstacles or things that are trying to stop you or slow you down, pushing towards those things, yeah. even if they don't seem like they should be there and it's unfair that they're in yeah. their first place. Which I think is so important to talk about because mm -hmm. it's 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 something where you, you don't want to ever have a lack of empathy, especially when people experience things that have been brought about. I mean, you you mentioned things, things that your dad yeah. did to you. You didn't mm -hmm. bring on this this notion of being having to deserve to be called worthless. Mm -hmm. But you talked about how that was a label that you had. But like, you could have stood and stayed in that label, but instead you you looked at a, at a bigger picture. And you kept seeing a better prize, um, something purposeful, more uh, worthwhile to pursue. That's right. And you continued on. And I, and I guess I find um, we find ourselves in a time in our world where more and more people can make excuses to not keep moving forward because of what's happened to them, rather than to look to Christ to give them strength to keep going, even if lots of things have taken place in their life which are unjust. Yeah, I think it's become popular to be wounded and to stay yeah. wounded in a lot of ways. Yeah. And then there's kind of a little bit of camaraderie that happens when it says, oh, you're wounded in yeah, that way Misery loves too. company. Right? Misery loves company. You know, and, and, and I told someone this after service as well, because they came up and, and they asked me, you know, they talked about being healed and they talked about how, you know, there's still things that come up in their life that, that makes them blow up or respond in certain ways. And, and we started talking back and forth and, and I kind of showed him a scar on my elbow and I told him, I said, this was a wound at one time. And, and at one time when you touched it, it hurt. Hmm. But I know that I'm healed from it now because if you touch that now, it doesn't hurt so bad anymore. Hmm. And, and there's places in my life that, just like in, in, in this person's life, that are still healing and I get that because if you still touch them, they still hurt, right? Hmm. There's still those things that, tender. Yeah. that word worthless, it still hurts a little bit, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I don't want it to, because I've, because like you said, like I said earlier, I've realized that the, and I've reminded myself that the purpose of life is to know God, and God calls me something completely different. Mm. I mean, His actions backed up what He called me in the first place. Yeah. I have a new identity in Christ Jesus. If you need to know your identity, I encourage you look at Ephesians one and look at each and every single one of those words, because they will give you life and a new identity that you have only if you are submitted and you're willing to die to who you think you are that's the whole thing too yeah. i think we're so consumed with being alive and being ourselves yeah we've gotten so consumed with i just want to be me i want to be me i got to do me i got to do you you know yeah. i got to do my best and you know i got to live my truth and and yeah. all those different things we forget that christianity is really about dying every single day yeah there's so, these colloquial cultural comments that mm -hmm. we 
at times just adapt into our Christian context. That's and right. <laughs> one of those is you be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you be you. We don't mean that. Because if I say you be you and you is something that's completely counter to what Christ calls us to, please don't be you, mm-hmm. right? But when we go with that and everyone says like, oh, just be you and you are this and, and, and you go like, then what happens is, is we settle for something so far less mm-hmm. than what Christ has called us to. Or sometimes we get stuck in our burdens versus moving towards the blessing that God has. That's right. And the things he wants to teach us. And so I think that that was one of the things that you, you pointed out is how when, when Peter was sleeping and Peter was probably exhausted from the sadness mm. and then God came in a miraculous way through you know the angel to say, hey, dude, get up. Like, you got to go. Um, I love the part where you talked about that at the same time that the angel was coming, right, that there was people praying in another place. The church yeah. was gathered together praying. And you, and you said it wasn't based upon the prayers of Peter that perhaps brought about the angel, but there were other people that were praying for him, which means that the other people knew of his circumstances. Mm-hmm. Maybe share a little bit of why it's so important that you do not put yourself in isolation in the midst of when burdens are piling up and how important it is to to be open with others so that they can be there defending and um, praying and crying out for you in your t- troubled times. Well, Peter isn't someone that we would call weak in the faith. He's not someone that we would call a poor disciple of Jesus Christ. I mean, he was, in a lot of ways, a leader of the early church, yeah. and he was a pastor and a preacher and, and all these different things, and he was he was strongly committed to Jesus. I mean, he would eventually die for his faith in Jesus and his identity as a Christian, not even wanting to be crucified like him, but rather crucified upside down so that it would give more honor to Christ even in his death. And so Peter isn't a weak person by any means, but there are circumstances. Weak people can have weaknesses. And strong people right. can too. Yep. That's right. And and and, and so both. Yep. Absolutely. And so Peter is in this place where he's got this buildup of burdens that's coming on him. And in the middle of it, we see him showing a lot of fruition of being downtrodden, exhausted depressed, whatever label you want to put mm-hmm. on it. Nonetheless, he's feeling defeated, but there's the church. And I love that line. It says, Peter was kept in prison, but the church, church. but the church, but yeah. the church, there's a, there's a contrasting word. That word, but is a contrasting word between where Peter was and where the church was. And so if we allow ourselves to be isolated and we kind of sector ourselves off, especially when we're hurt, which is very tempting yeah. to think, okay, I need to get away from everyone because then I might have less of a chance of getting hurt more. That's a lie, right? We need people. God has designed us to be people together. There's the body of Christ, which includes everybody together, working together towards the same goal, pushing with the same headship of Jesus Christ over us all. And so we're in this together. So the church is praying, and I love that the church isn't just praying. They're praying this ectenos prayer. This, yeah. this, they're, they're feeling it, too. Mm-hmm. They're feeling the desperation. If you don't know what ectenos is and you listen to the message, that's a Greek word. So yes, it's it's. I mean, it's it's. They're they're praying earnestly with everything that they have, which means that they also shared in the burdens that Peter was experiencing. Yep. But Peter probably felt alone because he only. I, I mentioned this. He knew about the prison. He didn't know about the prayers. Yes. Yeah. But the people who were praying for him at some point knew about his prison. Mm-hmm. So. Whether he communicated that with them or whatever, he wasn't in isolation that when he was in prison yes. that no one knew about it. That's right. And a lot of times I think we find ourselves in our own prisons and we've told no one we're in prison and so no one knows about it. And so no one can intercede for us and be there for us and 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 then we're left there on our own. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized too, I said weak people have weaknesses. And you looked at me like, what? Strong people have weaknesses yes, 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 too. Yes, yes. I was like, wait a minute, that, <laughs> that's, that's right. so redundant. Weak people have weaknesses. <laughs> they wow, do. That's how brilliant, true. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things you said was Herod, right? King Herod was very yeah. aware mm-hmm. of uh, the potential of Peter being uh, having this prison break moment because this already happened in Acts chapter five. That's right. And you made an incredible parallel between Herod doing everything he could to put 16 guards around to make sure that Peter stayed in prison to perhaps the enemy, Satan, at times, trying to thwart our efforts to break free because he knows what God might want to do in us and through us. That's right. And so he's going to try to push back and keep us imprisoned and and not uh, fulfill kind of what God has in our life. 
my question is, I think that's a, I think that's so true. I think the enemy at times comes and attacks people who are being used for kingdom agendas. And mm-hmm. if you're not a threat to uh, Satan's essential kingdom, then whatever. I don't need to tempt you. I don't need to do anything because you, you're not doing anything. But there's also the side of it of some people can look through every adversity that they have and be like, oh, that's the devil. Oh, the devil's doing that. Oh, yep. the devil took, oh, they took my parking space. That was the devil. <laughs> Tripped over that crack, broke my mother's back. That was the devil. You know, like, so. That was old school. I like that. Yeah. And a little, little twang there, too. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. where that came from. But how can we know if it's the enemy's doing or just coincidental circumstances when we have burdens or unforeseen and tragic circumstances in our life? I don't know if it's that important to know. Um, I think perseverance is applicable whether it's the devil or whether it's just the world or whether it's your own darn fault. Mm. I think that perseverance, I think that a lot of times, you know, the truth is, honestly, a lot of the burdens in my life are self-inflicted. And that's just truth, right? And I don't it's, think a lot of people want to admit that. No. But I don't a lot want to of, admit that either, but like, right? Man, it's so true. And, and honestly, a lot of the burdens within me are self-inflicted because I'm telling myself certain things that set myself up to be burdened. Hmm. And, and I'm convinced. What do you mean? Give me some examples of that. I will t- call myself a victim even when I just face a little bit of unfortune. Hmm. You know, I will label myself... Uh, living a life that's unfair and less than everybody else when i look at the microcosm of only my circumstance compared to one other person's that appears to be better than mine and not consider the bigger picture of how blessed i really am in comparison to what is happening all over the world i can be mad about i can be mad about how expensive gas is i mean that's just real life right now right i can i can go to the gas pump and feel really disheartened and not even consider how there's someone who's now growing up without a parent in Ukraine. You know, I mean, it's just real life. Yeah, pick, pick your trial, right? Pick, pick your, your trial. Brain. And I don't want to, we could list them all out. But I think there's things that I tell myself so I can throw my own pity party to try to feel better about my circumstance. But what it really does is actually create more burdens within me. Mm-hmm. And so do I need to know whether or not that's the devil or not? Maybe it's the devil whispering in my ear. Or maybe it's just my own foolishness, my yeah. own distraction, my own self-centeredness. Or maybe it's just the brokenness around me in the world that we live in. Either way, perseverance, looking to Jesus as our rescuer, saying, Hosanna, please save us now. It's applicable no matter if it's the devil, if it's the world, or if it's you. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that part alone is great just to, to mm. chew on. I, I tend to believe that the devil, he doesn't have the power to manifest physical circumstances, mm-hmm. as much as he does shooting mental bullets at you mm-hmm. and destroying your thought patterns and keeping you in places, um, interpreting circumstances in certain ways that are going to keep you sleeping to go with kind of the, um, the picture that you, you painted yesterday, mm-hmm. sleeping and not wanting to get up, get up and out of your chains. And I think that's where the devil begins to really do his most havoc is between your ears. Absolutely. Um, more than, like I said, this this particular circumstance manifesting. Uh, did the devil cause cancer to that person? Probably not. But how I respond to it and my attitude towards it and what it makes me think about God or think about others, or the whole, then the devil is definitely firing mental bullets all the time trying to take me the out. The devil's a liar. Yeah. So he lies. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned this uh, idea of you know, you, your posture sometimes is what keep us, keeps us in our burdens. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of talked about this, but just maybe just uh, kind of talk about it a little bit more. It seems like our culture now is enjoying the posture of having wounds, of having burdens, and creating definitive labels that um, if you speak against those labels that you've attached to yourself or someone else has attached to you, then you are labeled as being insensitive or yeah. you're someone that's not considered of somebody else's situation. Um, but it was so powerful to see you talk about that your posture, right, can be what actually chains you up. But when you actually change your posture, perhaps change your labels, it opens you up to the potential of freedom. That's right. Um, do you observe something similar in culture? And, and what, what would you say to that as we ha- continue to move towards a time where people want to stay stuck in chains rather than break free and be in that posture that is incarcerating. 
I mean, you said the kind of statement before that I've heard the cliche of misery loves company yeah. and uh, we're more connected than ever through social media and all these other things. And so because of that, we're all looking to be connected with other people. And somewhere along the line, we've discovered that misery is what connects us the quickest. And so mm. if we can all label ourselves with the same type of wound or the same type of damage, or even start to, I'm just going to be honest with you, exaggerate mm. our experiences. I know I, I'm, I'm sorry if that's insensitive, um, I know that's not universal to every it might, circumstance. It might not feel like the person is exaggerating their circumstances, no. but when you, like you mentioned, when you take inventory of all the other things In around picture, you, that's right. We have elevated that time to be so much bigger than maybe it is, or we use terminology um, that's pretty explosive. <laughs> well, and and culture has incentivized doing so now. Yeah. So so now we're incentivized because if I post that I have this damage in my life and I can label it this thing and we have a bigger vocabulary for these things than ever. I mean, young kids know what anxiety is all of a sudden. They know what depression yeah. is all of a sudden. They know what, you know, all these different bipolar disorder. Like these are things that I didn't grow up knowing about, but now or all the sexual labels, all and the sexual yeah. labels. Like yeah. there, there's so many things now that we have vocabulary for that we didn't even before. So now there's also an incentive to label ourselves this way because it connects us to other people and then gets more likes on our posts and and then it gets more shares because people say me too you know yeah. and all this different that wasn't a stab at that movement or anything i'm sorry but it, but you know it's just a simple like we want to be in the crowd and it used to be that you got in the in crowd by i don't know being good at sports or something like that nowadays it's by identifying with the damage that so many other people want to identify with as well it's become a trend yeah and the trend itself because we're yearning for community it's good to have those relationships. Yeah. But if community and relationships don't pick us up and push us out of our misery, and we stay there, then we are settling for less than what God has for us because our God is a God of hope and healing. And that's why we want to be a loving and life-giving yeah. church. Yeah. Because because we could be a church that is collectively damaged and victimized and never getting better. Yeah. And stuck and chained up and in control. Yeah. We could be in control and we know our doctrine real well and we know everything. We know all the answers. And so we can we can label you however we want and we're, we're grossly aware of everything that we're dealing with and we're in so much in control. But the scary part about being a loving and life-giving church is that that's not something that I can do on my own. I need the presence of Christ within me to change me, to form me, to transform me. And so because of that, that means that I have to surrender. Yeah. And surrendering takes stamina because surrendering is something I have to do moment by moment. And I need other people who are committed to that same transformational attitude in Christ around yeah. me as well. Because, you know, we say here at Rise all the time, like, you know, we want to be a people who welcome everyone and say, come as you are. <laughs> but by no means are we inviting everyone to stay as they are, including you Absolutely. and I. We're yeah. all... Uh, in this journey of becoming more like Christ and That's finding right. hope and healing in His name. And uh, when we settle for our brokenness, when God has something better, I think that is a, a tragedy that is um, something we're settling into that's, that's causing great damage to the Christian community and to the world at large. God did not create you to be a broken person. Yeah. God came to make all things new again. Amen. And yeah. so because of that, the opportunity in Jesus isn't to stay damaged. Yeah. It's to be delivered. It's to <laughs> to get the chance to be a light now yeah. and you shine to other people because not because you've risen yourself up. It's because God sent an angel miraculously into your life, so to speak, mm. and turned the light on so that you could see the truth of the gospel and know what that meant in your life. And it transformed you in a way so that you decided, I'm going to now die to myself so I can live in Christ so that when people look at me, now I might exhibit the character of Christ so I could be a light in the world because it's so different from the rest of the darkness that we're living in. You're a preacher at heart. I love it. Like you, you just have that like get him fired up, man, and he will <laughs> preach, preach, preach in a good, good way. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, hey, my last question for okay. you. We'll close up. Uh, you mentioned oftentimes that as opposed to moving forward in Christ, um, moving 
past the guards out of the prison. We wanted to stay there. We got to move past, sometimes your past, to move into the future God has for you. But sometimes we just uh, even want to get distracted by our addictions and just, or we get distracted and those distractions become addictions. Um, I just figured for the last question, will you please share with us all of the addictions you have in your life? <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you don't have to. I'm just, I, no, I mean, I just, no, 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 dude, I mean the first thing, honestly, it's this thing a lot of times, and I think it's something that we can identify with a lot, of, a lot. Um, it's, as they watch, an, I'm sorry, on this yeah, I'm sorry. If you're not watching, this is an iPhone. Um, it's it's Android a device. People out there, we are equal yeah. opportunity <laughs> cell phone that's providers. Awesome. I mean, yeah, that's awesome. Yes, I just showed my branding like <laughs> preferences, but it's it's the devices in our lives, and it's the hyper connectedness that we get to have. It's the awareness of everything that's happening all the time in everybody's life from everyone's perspective. Yeah. I mean, that's addicting for me. You yeah. know. I, I've caught myself, this is the first thing I look at when I wake up and the last thing that I look at before I go to sleep. And I've tried to be really intentional And you're intentional laying beside lately. your wife? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the last thing or the first okay, thing, but okay. I'm saying like, okay, well. Me either. too, me too. I yeah, get it. No, yeah. I time. just realized that this is something that is such a knee-jerk reaction for me to go to, which probably speaks into how strong the addiction is yeah. to it. Yeah. And I think that you know, just to kind of move towards closing, I was kind of joking, make you sweat a little bit what your addictions are. But, yeah. uh, but I, it is, if we're going to move from come as you are to don't stay as you are and mm-hmm. keep progressing, there are things you're going to have to move past and give up. And there's other things that are going to try to vie for your attention and your affection. And that can come in the form of, of an object like this, yeah. like a phone. That can come in the form of, of really hurtful relationships. Yeah. That can come from... Uh, substances it can come from workaholic tendencies all that but for us to experience the freedom of christ and breaking free out of those prisons you got to get up like you said you got to keep moving you got to let other people know and you have to believe that there's something better outside of that prison mm-hmm. you know and uh, i just felt like yesterday you did such a fantastic job of reminding mm-hmm. us that and um just really grateful for it so thank you. Well, thank awesome. you very much. So well, praise the Lord for that. So yeah, I had lots of other questions revolve, involving like hermeneutics and scriptural interpretation and oh, all that man. kind of stuff. But uh, we'll save that for a later episode of Digging Deeper. The extended um, version. Extended version. But yes. man, I, I hope that uh, this was um, encouraging and challenging to you. And uh, hey, this coming Sunday, we're not doing Acts. It's kind of a big holiday coming up here in the Christian tradition. What is that called? It's, it's, it starts with an E. Uh, is it Black Friday? No. Black <laughs> Friday. <laughs> yeah. Is it Cyber Monday? <laughs> yeah, it's all the... Easter. It's uh, Easter. Easter. So, hey, join with us. If you're you know here in San Diego, 8 o'clock, 9, 30, and 11 are services for Easter Sunday. We'll be broadcasting live at the 9, 30 service. Uh, for to catch us online, Good Friday Experience is here on the 15th mm-hmm. at 6.30 p.m., uh, ben and his team have done a fantastic job of getting that that. Uh, to that that service together. So exciting things, and probably lots to talk about next week's episode for digging deeper. Absolutely. So, so thanks for joining with us, and uh, we will talk to you again next week. And hope that you have just an incredible, incredible Easter celebrating. The tomb is empty. That changes everything.